Okay, uh, thank you for the introduction. The construction of public key encryption schemes, which are both efficient and secure, has been a fairly successful research area. And we have a number of uh, efficient concrete schemes. A very practical uh, and efficient approach to the construction of these is uh, hybrid encryption. And in a hybrid encryption scheme, we have two components. We have a key encapsulation mechanism, a chem, and a data encapsulation mechanism, which we call a DEM. And a chem is defined by these algorithms, and it will allow the encryptor to compute uh, an encapsulation of a random key, K. And it will then later allow the decryptor to recover this key from the encapsulation. The DEM is simply a uh, symmetric key uh, encryption scheme. Uh, and when you combine these two components in the obvious way, you will obtain a public key encryption scheme. Now, if the CHEM is in CCA secure and the DEM is one time CCA secure, we will obtain an in CCA secure encryption scheme. Alternatively, uh, we could use a slightly weaker CHEM. And if this is constrained in CCA secure, um, then we will have to use an authenticated DEM to achieve NCCA security. So in this talk, I'm going to focus on the problem of minimizing ciphertext overhead. And in a hybrid encryption scheme, uh, the ciphertext overhead is dominated by the CHEM, so we are going to focus on the CHEMs. And this is a table of the currently most efficient CHEMs defined in prime order groups. Uh, we can see that we can obtain in CCA security based on a non-interactive assumption with an overhead of, of free group elements. If the chem is only required to be constrained in CCA secure, then we can reduce the overhead to two group elements. And if we are willing to go to interactive assumptions or groups in which we have a, have a pairing, then we can obtain full in CCA security with an overhead of two group elements. So looking at this table, it seems fairly natural to ask, uh, is it possible to construct a chem which is in CCA secure and which has a ciphertext overhead of less than two group elements? And we might, we might hope that it's possible to construct a chem which has an overhead of just a single group element and some short string. And let me try to, to motivate that idea. Uh, consider the, the Kramer Shoe chem which has a, an encapsulation consisting of uh, free group elements. Uh, in this chem, the decapsulated key is only going to depend on the first group element, and the remaining group elements in the encapsulation is just used for checking validity. Um, if you want to compress the ciphertext overhead of this uh, scheme, we might uh, look for a way to do a more efficient validity check. And we might, for example, try to apply a hash function to a part of the encapsulation. And if the output of this hash function is less than a group element, we will have reduced uh, ciphertext overhead. Uh, the question is, of course, will the scheme remain secure uh, when we do this? And in this particular case, if we assume that H prime is a target collision resistant hash function, uh, it is actually still possible to prove the security of this chem based on the DDH problem. This is actually slightly surprising, but uh, we would like something that is more efficient. This will uh, reduce the overhead of, uh, with approximately half a group element. So let's consider the, the Hoffheinz kills chem. This chem will have an encapsulation of just two group elements, and we might want to uh, apply or try to apply a similar trick, and we can hope that uh, the resulting chem will still be secure. However, what we are showing is that this type of chem cannot be proven in CCA secure, assuming you want a black box reduction and, uh, and a non-interactive uh, problem. So more specifically, what we show is that there is no algebraic black box reduction from the one-way CCA security of a class of chems with ciphertext consisting of just a single group element and a string to the hardness of a non-interactive problem. And let me try to go through uh, some of the details of, of this statement. Um, first of all, uh, the class of chems we consider uh, consists of chems defined in a prime order group. And we assume that the public key uh, consists of a number of group elements 
and some auxiliary information which is assumed not to contain any group elements. And by small y, we're going to, to denote the discrete logs of, of the group elements in, in the public key. This may or may not correspond to the private key of the, of the chem. We then consider uh, an encapsulation which consists of a single random group element and a string which is output by this function f tilde. And the corresponding uh, uh, encapsulated key uh, should be derived in some algebraic way from the uh, public key. Now these functions, uh, f0, fi, and f tilde, are assumed to be scheme specific. And the only requirement here is that they are efficiently computable. So at Decapsulated key is assumed to be of, of this form, and again, the psi zero and psi one functions are assumed to be scheme dependent. But in this case, we assume that they're linear in the values y1 to yn. Um, and assuming that this chem should be correct, satisfy correctness, this is arguably a very mild assumption. Lastly, we assume that the last component of the encapsulation can be recomputed if you know the uh, Y values. So we believe this is an interesting class of chems since uh, it captures a lot of the structure of the existing uh, chems which are defined in prime order groups. So the type of security we consider for this chem is one-way CCA security, and let me just briefly remind you how that is defined. We consider an adversary which is given access to a decapsulation oracle, and given uh, a challenge encapsulation, he will produce a key. And we define the advantage of this adversary as the probability that the key he produces actually corresponds to the encapsulated challenge key. Yeah? So the non-interactive problems uh, I refer to is assumed to be uh, satisfying the following description. Uh, we have uh, three algorithms, uh, an instance generator which will generate a problem Y and a witness W. And then we have a verification algorithm, which will give a solution x and a problem and a witness would either output accept or reject. And then we have a trivial solution algorithm, which given a problem will output a solution. Now we define the hardness of, of an uninteractive problem by considering ad an adversary, which given a, a problem will output a solution. And we say that he wins if this is a a valid solution that is accepted. And we define the advantage of this adversary as the probability that he wins minus the probability that this trivial solution algorithm wins. So he needs to be better than the trivial solution algorithm to have, a, have an advantage. So the problems we can capture with this definition uh, is essentially all the, the problems which we normally use to, to base the security of, of chems on. But we can actually also capture the NCPA security of a chem. Uh, with this uh, definition. So lastly, uh, we need to consider the reductions and the type of reductions which we consider are black box reduction. And in, in our case, uh, if you have a black box reduction from the one-way CCA security of a chem to a non-interactive problem, it means uh, that we have an oracle probabilistic polynomial time algorithm such that for any adversary, and this might be an inefficient adversary, it's not required that he's polynomial time, if it's true that he has a non-negligible advantage in attacking the chem, then the simulator should have a non-negligible uh, advantage, or sorry, the reduction should have a non-negligible uh, advantage in solving the problem P, given Oracle access to this uh, adversary. And this is also known as a fully black box, con uh, fully black box reduction. So lastly, we uh, require this reduction to be an algebraic algorithm. And consider an algorithm which is given as input some group elements and uses randomness R and then produces another group element. Then we say that this algorithm is algebraic if there exists an extractor which given the same input uh, produces a uh, description of Y in terms of the original input group elements. So I have to emphasize that we, it's uh, the security reduction we assume is algebraic. And this is not an assumption which you make about an arbitrary adversary. And I also want to highlight that the security reductions of the existing chems are, uh, in fact, algebraic. So this doesn't seem like an overly restrictive assumption. So given this, hopefully it's slightly more clear what we are actually showing. 
so let me just uh, restate uh, our main theorem. Uh, for all the chems in this chem class which I define, and for all the non-interactive problems satisfying the uh, description I give, um, if P is hard, if the problem is hard, then there is no algebraic fully black box reduction from the one-way CCA security of the chem to the problem P. And the way we show this is uh, by using a uh, oracle uh, separation. Uh, we couldn't actually show this uh, using just a single oracle, so we have to rely on a distribution of oracles. So uh, our main theorem is based on, on the following lemma. Uh, assume we have an oracle distribution denoted by this cloud, such that for all the chems in our chem class, there exists an algebraic adversary, such that when we draw an oracle from this distribution, the expected advantage of the adversary in attacking the chem is not negligible when he's given access to this oracle. Right? So furthermore, assume that for all the problems in our a non-interactive uh, problem class, and for all algebraic algorithms which try to solve these problems, that, that there exist uh, simulators such that when we draw uh, an oracle from the distribution, the expected advantage of this algorithm in solving the problem is bounded by the advantage of, of these uh, simulators. If those two conditions are true for this oracle distribution, we can conclude, and we show this in the paper, that there cannot be an algebraic and fully black box uh, reduction from the one-way one CCA security of the chem to the problem P. Right? Um, and to use this uh, lemma, we of course need to define this uh, distribution uh, and then define uh, our chem uh, adversary and lastly, uh, define these simulators. So the, the very basic idea here is that we are going to define an oracle which essentially breaks the chem, which makes this uh, adversary trivially uh, or trivial to define. Uh, and then we are going to use the algebraic properties uh, of this algorithm to, to essentially simulate the oracle when showing this bound. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the time to go into to all the details of this, but please have a look at the proof in the paper uh, for these. Um, and if you do look at the proofs in the paper, you will discover that the statement which we can actually prove is slightly stronger because of the way we define the, the chem attacker. More specifically, if we assume that the public key contains n group elements, we can rule out a reduction from the bounded one-way NCCA security of the chem to the non-interactive problem. And in a similar way, uh, we can use the equivalence uh, between non-malleability and uh, indistinguishability under a single parallel decryption query to obtain the result that you cannot have a reduction from the non-malleability of of the chem to the non-interactive problem either. So this is, this is just small enhancements of, of, the, of the theorems which you can derive from, from the way we actually we, we prove the main theorem. So uh, let me uh, say a little bit about uh, programmable hash functions as well because these results have some implications for these. These uh, programmable hash functions were introduced by uh, Hoffheinz and Kiltz, and they are uh, fairly useful because they provide uh, a level of programmability in the standard model, which we normally only have in the random oracle model, or at least a flavor uh, of programmability. And the main application for these uh, was uh, short signatures, but there might be many other uh, applications. So what we are showing, uh, is that if you have a poly K programmable hash function, and this essentially uh, indicates the level of programmability you have for, our, for the programmable hash function, if you have one of these, you can construct a chem which is in CCA secure based on the decisional DDH problem. Uh, and this, uh, this chem will have, a, uh, have an algebraic black box security reduction, and it will have a ciphertext overhead of just a single group element. So this actually fits uh, 
the previous uh, or the description of the previous impossibility result. So this type of chem shouldn't actually exist. So what we could conclude is uh, that that cannot exist an algebraic poly K programmable hash function in a prime order group because that would contradict our uh, impossibility result. Playing around a little bit with the uh, with the with the bounded uh, NCCA security of of, of this uh, can be defined. We can actually get a slightly more uh, detailed uh, or slightly stronger statement, and that and that is for for any n and any k, there exists no algebraic n k programmable hash function uh, which has a hash key containing less than n group elements. So it kind of creates a bound for the length of the programmable hash function. Uh, hash key, if you like. Yeah? So, to sum up, uh, we have uh, shown that there exists no uh, algebraic back box reduction from the one way CCA security of a class of chems to a non interactive problem. And we believe that this class is yeah, fairly interesting since yeah, it does seem to capture a lot of the structure of the existing uh, very efficient chems. So it's kind of indirectly saying that perhaps the existing techniques for proving these can secure cannot be used if you want to compress uh, the ciphertext that will head further. Um, and this has some implication for uh, programmable hash functions. Um, this work uh, leaves a, a lot of uh, open problems. Uh, for example, you might uh, be interested in, uh, in trying to to show whether or not it's uh, possible or impossible to have an NCCA secure chem, which is defined in a standard prime order group, which doesn't have any pairings, and which will be based on a non-interactive uh, assumption, but still has a ciphertext overhead of just uh, two uh, group elements. It's also an open problem to extend the results to constrain CCA security. Uh, our current result is actually only for the ordinary CCA security. But after having, having looked at this for a little while, we, we believe, or it seems possible to, to simply uh, extend our result to also cover the constrained CCA security case. Um, and lastly, our, our class of chems assume that the key is actually a group element. So it doesn't capture the chems which are making use of key derivation functions. We have a uh, um, small discussion of, of what we might be able to conclude about these uh, in the paper. So if you're interested in this, please uh, have a look at the paper. That's a very brief discussion about this. So this was all I wanted to tell you. So thank you for your attention.